This is a request video for one of my subscribers on Patreon. But it's a topic I wanted to cover anyway. It has been interesting to me to observe a shift in opinion in friends and colleagues who are libertarian or minarchist that has occurred ever since this latest round of internet censorship really started. Suddenly a lot of these people are seeing the same issues that I have for many years in handing over control of such important aspects of our lives to private companies and allowing them to become monopolies. Suddenly now that these companies are taking on a socio-political agenda and that what they are doing is impacting on these people's free expression, now suddenly and abruptly they understand the need for regulation, they understand the need for a balancing external power or breaking up monopolies. They seem to now understand the need for intervention where these monopolistic powers emerge. And this is simultaneously heartening and disappointing. Heartening in that it shows that people's attitudes and minds can be changed. Disappointing in that something bad has to happen to them before they're willing to reconsider. Now the anarcho-capitalists, of course, at the extremer end of the spectrum on this, don't seem to have changed their minds. They seem to think somehow the invisible hand of the market will step in. Perhaps we will see some fracturing and scattering, but I don't think we will, without some kind of intervention, see any real true balance or openness in this way restored. Which brings us to another topic that many of these people like, like to argue about. It's a kind of example an exemplar of the the arguments between anarcho-capitalist libertarian type people and those who think state intervention is okay and this argument goes around and around and around and it's generally centered around the issue of roads people who support the existence of a state and the commons and, and mutualism will often point to roads as being necessary infrastructure which is best supported by a social system, by the government, be it state, local or national, being in charge of it, regulating it, making sure it's up to a decent standard, making it freely available to everyone, paid for via taxes, by which you get the economy of scale and so on. On the other hand, people say private industry can and should build roads and maintain them and so on, and they offer an idea of creating tolls and so on to, to help pay for them. Roads, like the internet, even more so because they're physical, create natural monopolies. If there's only one road in and out of a particular place, then someone stepping in and purchasing that road or, or building it could establish a natural monopoly. They could charge essentially whatever they wanted. The cost and expense of building another road isn't really available to the people locally. They would have to try and convince another company and there is no particular reason why that company would charge any less. More land would be despoiled, more resources would be wasted, costs would still be high because there would still have to be tolls to pay for the road. It's a duplication of effort, a, a prime example of the wastefulness that can occur if you pursue only free market options and purely free market options. I'm simply too much of a pragmatist to be a pure anything, a pure anarchist, a pure socialist, certainly not a pure marketeer because I come at things from the view of the left. There are values and drawbacks to all of these approaches. But when it comes to really important things like infrastructure, like medicine, 
the value of socialization over the free markets becomes inescapable. The pointlessness of the replicated effort that you find in the private sector with regards to these things is unhelpful, whereas in other sectors, competition is extremely helpful. The damage it can do, the sheer power that a monopoly can have, but that also applies to the state. A state should not have a monopoly on power, just why it should be accountable to the people in some way. You find the same problems whether you want the free market to be in charge of everything or whether you want the state to be in charge of everything. A mixed economy seems to be the most robust and effective way of going about things with, from my point of view, a cant to the left. So this is true when it comes to roads. This way you can have enough roads. You can use the communal savings and the economy of scale to ensure that you supply roads to regions where those roads are not necessarily profitable. And via that means you can make those areas more profitable. You can link them up to the rest of the country, open up markets, encourage investment. The same thing is true of the internet. The more we roll out fibre to rural areas, the more likely companies are to relocate there because they can still get access to a fast internet. Before the advent of fibre, this was something that did happen. Tech companies were converting barns out in the countryside and using them as centres of business. Now they've migrated back to the cities and towns because that's where they can get the fast, cheap internet. I mean, this is true for services on the net as well as the infrastructure of the net. Natural monopolies have emerged and they are now abusing their position just as a landowner who owned the only road to a town could abuse it. They're not necessarily abusing it monetarily, though some of that occurs. Some of that will occur if we ever lose net neutrality. But they are abusing that position for petty political and socio-political ends as well. If this is such a clear case that even people who are libertarians, economic libertarians, even people who are minarchists can see that this is an instance where government intervention, either by changing the law or more directly, is necessary, then it's something profound, it's something meaningful, and it's something we should pay heed to. Zang. Old Fat Punks is part caper, part comedy, part nostalgia, and part commentary. It follows three aging punks as they build themselves up for one big, nihilistic last hurrah. You can buy Old Fat Punks at Amazon, Drive Through Fiction, or Lulu.com. Follow the links below or search on those sites.